Okay, so it's Martin Cross here with Austria's new chief coach, Robert Sens, three times world champion in the past, which I think we'll get to talk about at some time in this chat. Robert, it's great to welcome you to Crossy's Corner. Thank you very much, Martin. <laughs> and a very warm hello to you. Brilliant. Now, um, it was uh, it was quite a big shift for you to change your role from Mainz, where you coached for so many years, to the Austrian Federation. Can you tell us a little bit about how that came about? Um, well, in uh, March, the corona crisis um, hit Europe pretty hardly, or not pretty hardly, pretty hard. And um, I've been in talks with the Austrian Rowing Federation since since a while. They they uh, um, advertised uh, the job at the beginning of the year for the post Olympic for like starting at the uh, at September. And um, as soon as the Olympic Games were postponed, uh, postponed, the Austrian Federation saw a uh, time window, a window of opportunity to. I uh, undertake some major changes uh, and uh, try to use the back then 14, 15 months of uh, preparation time until Tokyo 2021. Yeah. Uh, they want to they improve the program. And so we started talking uh, yeah, much more concretely. And uh, yeah, yeah and we, we, we did all do the difficult decisions and uh, we jumped. Yeah, yeah. And how, how tough a decision? I know you've you've put on Facebook that it wasn't uh, easy to leave. You know the guys you were coaching, uh, Jason Osborne amongst them uh, at Mainz with a year to the Olympics. But it was a big it was a big call for you because it's a, a big sort of bright new start, isn't it? Yes, it was it was an extremely difficult decision. Um, I worked uh, with Jason in the last eight years. We had our up, ups and downs, and uh, we went through, yeah, a very long but uh, successful partnership. And of course, I would have uh, liked to see it through to the end of uh, prob prob probably probably the end of the of his lightweight rowing career. Um, but uh, it's just uh, working with him as much as as as, as I enjoyed it. Um, it's just. Uh, I had to look at the bigger picture, family, future, post-2020, and uh, there was an opportunity that I couldn't let go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, was it, what was it that attracted you to Austria particularly? Because I, I know it's quite close, you know, relatively geographically, just, just across the border. Um, but uh, They didn't have the greatest uh, championships in 2019. I know there's still quite a few crews to qualify. What, what was it that attracted you to Austria? Um, well, I've been racing in Austria. Like uh, I, I started rowing in Bavaria, so <laughs> this is uh, like uh, I, I used to row on Austrian regattas. I've been in the last two and a half years as a as a side job. I was I've been already working as a high performance director in in Hungary, which was very interesting. But there was always kind of the language barrier, and uh, I I had the feeling I couldn't uh, the, the impact that I could have in that nation as with my knowledge wasn't yeah. wasn't quite quite there because everything had to go uh, via translators and especially the the, the written languages that uh, a lot of, a lot stays stays in the dark when you when you don't really speak the language, and that was kind of a bit of unfulfilling. And um, when this opportunity in Austria came up, um, it's, it, it was a very interesting because I think the Austrian Rowing Federation is a pretty pretty well established federation. They have a yeah. good structure. They have good coaches here. They have an awesome uh, board and sports director since I, that I know uh, since quite a while. Horst Nussbaumer, the the president, I know since years. It's very attractive because they were very open for change. And of course, the German language is is is, is very attractive to me. That uh, I can uh, speak in my mother language here with the coaches, yeah. with, with the athletes, and um, that that attracted me. And of course, the country itself. It's like we have yeah. beautiful like yeah. life easier. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. you've, you've you've moved house now. You're you're out of Mainz and you're living living in Austria. In Vienna, yes, yes, we. Like my son and my wife, uh, they came last week. So, they're, so the whole family is since a week officially Viennese, and uh, we're very happy. 
<laughs> you're, you're married to an Australian rower, Katrina. Yes, that's true. Yeah. How did that come about? That uh, that relationship, that romance. Uh, I mean, the last twenty years now, or the last two months? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, when you first met, because it's. Oh. Yeah, it was of course at the, at the after party of the Olympic Games in 2000. <laughs> that oh, way. You're yeah, that we met. Yeah, she was a U23 rower there, and uh, I, uh, we were my pair partner and I. We were very frustrated. So, as it is at these rower parties, a lot of beer was involved, and yeah. <laughs> you've, yeah. Been you've been together. You've been together for a long time now. Yeah, we're married since. Yeah. Nearly 16 years. And you're both, are you both rowing coaches? Um, my wife uh, studied actually town planning and history in, in Australia, but the last 10 years in, in, in Germany that we were living there together in Mainz, she was head coach of that rowing club there, yeah. Oh, so, and, and, and will she be rowing coaching now in Austria with you or is she looking for something else? It's, it's not the plan. She, uh, it's, it, it was pretty intense. It was, to be honest, very intense for our relationship too. Both rowing coaches. Uh, it's, it's, it's hard to, to take not the work at home or to home the work and just find different topics at home. Now I, she's uh, at the moment is, is with the move and uh, our son that's changing school. Like the, the, the family management is, is very complicated at the moment, and uh, we're, we're trying to, to whoop all that at the moment and i'm very thankful yeah. that supporting this move and this is this is is, is 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 enough and we'll just uh see how the future goes and what what she what she wants to do yeah 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 so so with, with austria i mean what what are your targets for 2021 with the austrian squad uh, you know I, i know your your top athlete is magdalena um in the single skull Yes. Uh, but you've got some good guys um, in in the four. I guess I was surprised they they might not have been able to make Olympic qualification last year. Um, what are your plans? What are your targets? Um, it, with the short term target, yes, is, is that we prepare in a in a wide um, with a wide with a large team. We prepare the European Championships. We're still thinking it's it's it's, it's happening. We're still optimistic about it. We're intending to to enter with a large team like uh, women's single, men's pair, men's four, men's quad, lightweight women's double, lightweight men's double, men's single. Um, of course, our absolute top priority at the moment is, is Magdalena. She she had a bit of a difficult year um, in in 2019, but uh, she's very well back on track uh, in the last year. So um, she's working together with uh, her long long time coach Kurt Treer again. She uh, pulled PBs this year already, has um, got through the corona crisis very well without any, any major interruptions. And uh, we are here at the moment in training camp in Hallstatt, beautiful Hallstatt. She's uh, showing good speed. So we, we want to get her, of course, back on track, direction medals, um, where she was 17 and 18. Yeah. Um, And then, of course, we have, um, I think it's a very important group, men's, men's sweep for Austrian rowing. We have... Uh, good rowers here we have real young good talent there like uh, a lot of the guys won 2016 the u23 world championships i remember them they, yeah they have uh have made yet the the next step uh, it's very important that we that we help them to 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 get the next step done and um try to develop that group this discipline direction 2024 And um, yeah, we're, we're, tomorrow our nomination we get us uh, U19, U23 happening. We we try to get the, this structure a bit uh, into a, a long-term approach. Like the, we want to to keep the athletes yeah. in the A team and start, of course, the, the the talent pump to to get the talent pump working. That we are able to generate some comp some generate some uh, competition in the in the A team. So how much coaching are you doing of crews compared to, uh, you know, liaising with uh, coaches already there? Um, I'm not coaching any 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 boats directly, except with uh, in a team with the uh, Courtrea, uh, Magdalena. So I'm I'm yeah, fairly often on the water, like I'd say four times per week, but always with uh, a boat coach. I'm uh, more 
working with the coaches into teams. Um, I'm seeing them as as as, as fun a functional team is for me a team and a coach, and I'm trying to support these teams that they have the maximum success together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, trying so to organize the overall program for the whole team. We we are working as a team. That's uh, one of the big changes that we have undertaken here in the last three months. Not that everyone is training in in their hometowns like we we do camps together as a large team. Yeah, and uh, yeah. So, um, because one of one of the reasons I asked that is because I think you know, looking at um, your double skull <clears throat> last year, um, Osborne and Rommelman, was it? Yeah. And yeah. Um, and then looking at Jason Osborne, the way that he sculled in in 2018 in Plovdiv when he when he won the title and 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 took that world record. I mean, the the technique was beautiful, particularly. The way he rode around the front end was was breathtaking. So clearly, you have a lot of talents in the coaching field. Yeah, thank you. But it's uh, Jason is a very talented athlete anyway. So uh, yeah, I I wish I could make uh, out of every athlete uh, a Jason Osborne, but that's that's not possible. Um, but yes, I, I I enjoy being on the water. Still, I enjoy working with athletes and coaches, and uh, I think. What, what 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 we could manage in the last weeks and months here in the training camps that we have spent together, that we have a fairly open communication with the coaches and the teams, and that we have uh, we talk a lot about rowing and technique, and I think that's 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 very important that uh, everyone is 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 willing to learn on a daily basis, and we we need to on a on a daily basis in camps we need to. Um, reflect on ourselves if we're on a good way or on a bad way, and we we should never stop talking about and trying to find a bit more a uh, bit more speed. And I think we are on a good way, and we have talented coaches here too. Yeah, um, uh, that uh, you know they are and very successful coaches like Courtrea, for example, who I'm learning a lot of too. I think we in the interaction here, we like as a, as a team, we try to learn and and improve. That's 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 very important. I think we're on a good way with that. Yeah. So what what are your own personal influences in terms of technique? Um, has it come from when, when you rode or has it come from watching uh, other teams in Germany or has it come from talking to other coaches? I'm thinking about the way the blade goes into the water and, and particularly the rhythm on the way forward, you know, and the, the, the easy sweep. Where have you got these, uh, your, your concept of, of the rowing stroke from? Um, wow, well, that's a that's a big question. <laughs> it's a big question. Um, you know, my first my first coach was uh, not sure if you you if you if you know Professor Doctor Theodor Körner from the GDR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he was men's head coach in the GDR, and my my first coach was Erwin Krakow. In that time, he was women's head head coach, and. Um, I had him, it was a huge coincidence. I was in a, in a small rowing club in Bavaria. Uh, we didn't even have a boathouse. And when he stopped uh, coaching, uh, when he like, was 75, he stopped coaching in Berlin and moved to Bavaria with his wife and started working with this uh, junior that was me. And um, I think m most of my rowing, what I how I see rowing is still, is still with the with the theories of Kerner and and Krakow, like uh, like the GDR rowing, I I, I still uh, believe in that. And um, of course, I'm a German, and we have um, um, we we are highly influenced by the by by mechanical by a mechanical FEA institute that's in in, in, in Berlin. And um, yeah, I think this is this is of course a huge influence uh, on me. Like my own rowing, I I, I did. Uh, I, 100% that what we what we were like the German rowing technique, but in the last years I um, I changed it a bit, especially with Jason. We we tried uh, to to yeah find a, find a few new ways, and um, I think that direction that we went in the like in the years 15, 16, 17, 18, um, we tried to figure ways between the way we train, like the endurance training and the rowing technique, because I think there's a, there's a huge link between these, 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 uh, these two things. Like if you do a lot of weight training or if you do 
a lot of uh, power per stroke training. If it, it, it's, it's important what kind of uh, training intensity distribution you do. Yeah. We, we follow, or we, we are highly influenced by the, by the theory of the polarized uh, intensity distribution. So we do a lot of high speed and high, high rating. And, um, you know, with this kind of um, high rating comes a certain technique so that uh, uh, you, you need to have a, a really good footwork and you need to be very controlled with your feet so that you don't uh, overload at the catch. Uh, otherwise, the training load in, in, in the high speed will just not be bearable. And I think this is, this is how we, we try to develop Jason's uh, nice front end. Um. And, I've got I've got a film here I think um, of uh, of Jason rowing. Maybe you can talk a little bit about it if I play it play it a couple of times. Um, yeah, go for it. Yeah, that was uh, training camp twenty eighteen in Budapest pre first World Cup one, and um, I don't remember exactly, but I think it was a. Uh, three times three minute piece on um, 140 pace. Uh, it's actually not one of the, 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 the better paces because he is uh, very lifty with the shoulders and the boat jumps a bit too much. He, they, they, they are, he, like in, in this, in this uh, after this, or when, the way he rose now, we would have uh, talked uh, very critical after that and would have said, okay, he needs to be, you know, um, like the legs come well and he moves very well and uh, the big mass of his body, he moves that all very well. Like he doesn't spend much time in the, in the stern, but he, he's, uh, he's lifting the boat far too much out of the, of the out of the water there. He do normally does it much better. And a week later at the World Cup, he did it also much better. That actually looks like uh, I would say that at the beginning of beginning of the session, still not 100 percent there. Like yeah, yeah. Uh, I think he, they are, they are. Yeah, normally at, at a at a peak performance, he rose better than that. But um, yeah, we 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 watch. Um, of course, what I like to do is I like I like to see a boat running. I know there are like biomechanists, especially in uh, in uh, in GB. That say that uh, the boat is just a piece of plastic and don't look at it, and it's just uh, the, the masses. But uh, I, I like to see a running boat, and uh, I think that's important too. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I think watching because one of the things that I notice about you as a coach is you're very, which is different to other coaches. Um, I, I know everyone's got different personalities. I'm thinking now of someone like Jurgen Grobler or, or or Ian Wright or Mike Tatey, but you 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 share quite a lot of your coaching on social media. Yeah, which is really I mean, interesting. You know, it's, I think it's great that you do it. Well, wh why is that? Uh, because I, I am only about one thing sure, and that is that I, I that there's still a lot to, to learn for me, <coughs> and um, I'm I'm trying to be. I think coaching has a lot to do with uh, um, with creativeness. Yeah, uh, just um, like uh, Pep Guardiola, he said once, if you want to understand, oh no, he has it of uh, Luis uh, of Cesar Minotti, he has it. If you want to understand the soccer, you have to understand the people, and mm -hmm. uh, and, and 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 I kind of I kind of still see that with rowing, with rowing too. Like every rower is different, every boat is different, every body is different. Um, for example, Jason, he has a, he's, he's not tall for a rower, so we need to like have a, we need to, needed to develop a, a certain rowing technique for him. That is the best for him. And I think this is, this is, this is, this makes it intellectual, very intellectually, very interesting. The, the, the coaching, like yeah, yeah. Always, always, always finding some, finding something new, always for one team, finding the, the, the best setup, the best training that they should do. And, for that, I think I, I try to stay open, and I, I try to listen, and I try to I try to hear, and I try to see what's out there, and uh, and uh, I think that's by being open. I have the feeling I, um, especially on social media, you get a feedback that's very interesting, and yeah. uh, a lot of feedback is makes me makes me personally really uh, reflect, helps me reflecting on on the theories that I'm having or 
what I'm, are we on the right way or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think this is, uh, this kind of swarm intelligence is, is, is a very interesting, is a very interesting thing. Yeah.